Hello, my name is Courtney Raj. I'm the Advocacy Director at the Committee to Protect Journalists, an independent nonprofit organization that protects press freedom and the right of journalists to report the news safely and without fear of reprisal around the world. This is precisely what brings us here today. Jamal Khashoggi walked into the Saudi Arabian consulate in Istanbul and never came out. The Saudi regime initially denied wrongdoing and said that Jamal left the consulate alive. They were soon forced to admit that Jamal did not leave the consulate alive. Hashokshi was killed soon after entering the consulate, according to the CIA, which determined with high confidence that the murder was ordered by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Why was Jamal killed? Jamal was killed because of his critical work as a journalist. Jamal's career in journalism started in 1985 and it spanned two decades during which he worked as an editor and a reporter for several local and regional news organizations. Jamal's career started in 1985 and spanned two decades, during which time he worked as a reporter and an editor for several local and regional news outlets. He also briefly served in a stint as editor-in-chief of Al Watan until he was dismissed from his job because of critical material that he published. Eventually, he went into exile in the United States, but he continued to write and express himself critically about the Saudi regime. He was a columnist for the Washington Post and became most, most known for working for the global opinion section. And it was his critical writings about the Saudi regime and his last column, which was about the importance of freedom of expression in the Arab world, that kept him on the regime's radar. Eventually, his criticism was deemed worthy enough for the regime to demand his assassination. Members of Congress have strongly condemned this murder, but the Trump administration has not. Rather, it has responded by questioning the CIA's findings and reiterating that the U.S. relationship with Saudi Arabia must not suffer for this crime. We disagree. The Committee to Protect Journalists is here at the White House this morning today to show President Trump and his administration that people across the world in the United States, value the freedom of the press and demand transparency and accountability for the assassination of Jamal Khashoggi. Since Jamal's death, the Committee to Protect Journalists has led an on and offline campaign called Justice for Jamal. We have asked people to fill out placards about why they are demanding justice for Jamal, what, who they are and why journalism matters to them. And hundreds of people responded in placards that are some of which are posted here and on social media and online. So we hope that today those in the White House who are responsible for reporting on what happened to Jamal will see and hear this plea for justice and hear from the people who said it is important, the role of journalists is critical in informing the public, and the White House must take its obligation to inform seriously and hold Saudi Arabia accountable. CPJ is also here because a deadline looms. On October 10th, the chairman and ranking member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee at the 115th session of Congress sent a letter to President Trump triggering a provision of the Global Magnitsky Act. This requires the administration to respond in 120 days with a report detailing who was responsible for the murder and whether the administration will impose sanctions in response. On November 15th, the administration indeed did announce sanctions on 17 Saudi individuals involved in the murder. But while this was an important step, it is not sufficient. 
It did not go far enough in establishing culpability or holding Khashoggi's murders to account. So on November 20th, Senators Corker and Menendez sent a second letter, this time requesting the administration specifically investigate involvement by the Crown Prince. Tomorrow, February 8th, will mark that 120th day deadline for the administration to provide the committee with a full and final report. We want to make sure this happens. And the Committee to Protect Journalists, our colleagues from Reporters Without Borders, from the Justice for Jamal campaign, from PEN America, and the thousands of other people around the world who are demanding justice, want the administration to take this deadline seriously and issue an unclassified report that details the administration's findings on Jamal's murder, including involvement by the Saudi crown prince, and whether the administration will impose further sanctions. We are also calling for transparency because according to news reports and US senators who were briefed by the CIA, the CIA has concluded with high certainty, high confidence rather, that the crown prince ordered the assassination. There are also strong indications that the U.S. government had information that, about the threats to Jamal prior to his murder. So given the international importance of this case and its implications for press freedom, the need for answers far outweighs any justification for secrecy. That is why the Committee to Protect Journalists and the Knight Institute filed a Freedom of Information Act request to obtain information from the U.S. government related to Jamal's case. And it is why, in the absence of action from the administration, Congress should compel the executive branch to release all intelligence files related to what the administration knew about the Saudi plans to harm Jamal and what intelligence agencies have learned about the murder. Any proper response to a situation of this magnitude requires knowledge about what caused the situation and what could have been done to prevent it. The Committee to Protect Journalists also continues to urge the UN Secretary General to conduct an international criminal investigation. The current inquiry into Hashokshi's murder, led by the UN Special Rapporteur on extrajudicial summary and arbitrary executions, is an important first step and is a welcome development, but it is not a replacement for a high-level criminal investigation. The most chilling message sent by the murder of Jamal Khashoggi is that no one is safe from Saudi Arabia's brutal reach. But this need not be true. A strong response from the U.S. government and from President Trump himself and other governments would send a message to the Saudi authorities that acts such as the murder of Jamal Khashoggi will not be tolerated, that they will be met with the full measure of justice. We demand the Trump administration pursue true justice for Jamal and provide the public with an accounting of what the U.S. government knew about this hideous crime. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good morning. My name is uh, Ahmed Badir. I am um, the president of, or the founder of the Justice for Jamal Khashoggi campaign. My name is spelled A-H-M-E-D, and the last name is B-E-D-I-E-R. The death of uh, Jamal Khashoggi is not a mystery. We know when it happened, where it happened, and who did it. That's not a mystery. The mystery since his death is why the White House is helping Saudi Arabia cover up one of the biggest murders in this past year the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. In any other place in civilized world, when someone is killed, the killer is held accountable. And so far, this White House has responded by providing excuses and providing cover-up for the murders of Jamal Khashoggi. 
The United States recently announced that they are withheld, withholding weapon sales to Cameroon because of their human rights violations. They need to do the same thing in the case of Saudi Arabia until the killers of Jamal Khashoggi are brought to justice. There's a saying that says justice delayed is justice denied. The friends of Jamal Khashoggi, the family deserves justice. And justice has not been provided in this case. One of the founding principles of this nation is the freedom of the press. This White House has constantly attacked the press, has demonized the press. And now, even when the press is killed by one of our allies, they're providing excuses and justification. It's time that the White House and the Trump administration stops providing cover-up for the killers of Jamal Khashoggi, specifically Mohammed bin Salman, and bring those that are responsible to justice. And we understand that Mohammed bin Salman is not representative of the people, of the great people of Saudi Arabia. And it doesn't mean by holding Mohammed bin Salman accountable and the people behind this murder, holding them accountable does not mean we have to cut off ties to Saudi Arabia. But if the government of Saudi Arabia continues to deny justice for Jamal Khashoggi and his loved ones, then those people need to be held accountable. We should not provide any weapon sales. We should not provide support for Saudi Arabia until the uh, killers of Jamal Khashoggi are held responsible. And not acting accordingly sends a chilling effect to all those journalists and the people in the Middle East and in the Arab world. That basically even in the United States, when someone is a resident of the United States, writing for one of the biggest publications in the world, that they can be killed by a government and nothing is done about it. So if someone as prominent as Jamal Khashoggi is killed and nothing happens, what does that say for other people that are seeking justice? And what does that say about the thousands, tens of thousands of prisoners, political prisoners, that are rotting away in Saudi prisons? and in the UAE prisons, and in the prisons of Egypt, and throughout the Arab world, journalists and others that are seeking freedom. The people that Jamal Khashoggi was speaking up for, that he risked his own life for, it would be a great disservice to just let this issue go. If we don't prosecute, if this White House does not hold the killers of Jamal Khashoggi responsible and accountable, that sends a wrong message to the entire populations of the Middle East, those people that participated in the Arab Springs, and the people that are risking their lives, the men and the women, that are risking their lives every day for freedom and democracy in that region. For years, our country here was seen as a beacon of freedom. In fact, even going as far as exporting and promoting freedom when invading Iraq and launching other wars. But when Jamal Khashoggi is killed and chopped up in an ISIS-like attack by one of our allies and nothing is done about it, then that what does that say about our own values and our principles here? It sends a hypocritical message to those populations and it says that the United States government will stand with dictators over freedom. And that's unacceptable. We can't be complicit in this crime because if we provide cover up, then we're complicit in it. Let's provide justice for Jamal Khashoggi. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Thomas Melia. I'm the Washington director of PEN America. PEN as in mightier than the sword, and also poets, essayists, and novelists. We also defend the rights of other kinds of writers, like journalists. So as an association of writers, we grieve for Jamal Khashoggi and his family. We feel like a member of our family has been taken from us. So we're here today to demand justice for Jamal, in partnership with our friends at the Committee to Protect Journalists, Reporters Without Borders, and all of those who've joined in the campaign for justice for Jamal. I also want to express our appreciation to those members of Congress who have stepped forward, not only in enacting the Global Magnitsky Act in the year 2016, which provides a framework and a mechanism to hold people accountable for gross human rights violations, such as the gruesome murder of Jamal Khashoggi but also for those who have stepped up in recent weeks to demand justice in this particular case. The senators and other leaders who appealed to the president to act on this case 
uh, which gives us the deadline that presents itself tomorrow, February 8th, but also those like Senator Menendez who've recently introduced legislation to insist on accountability, and to Congressman Jerry Connolly from across the river in Virginia in whose district Jamal Khashoggi resided until the time of his murder. There are members of Congress that are stepping up and pushing for accountability and justice, and we support their efforts and we appreciate their leadership. I also want to say that the writers who we bring together in our association at PEN America have signed a letter to the Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Gutierrez, asking that there be an independent international organization, international investigation convened to find out what really happened and who was really responsible so that justice can be done and that nobody is immune from accountability and from being held responsible for their actions, not even the most highest officials in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So we're pleased to be able to join today in the campaign for justice for Jamal. Thank you all for coming here this morning. Again, thank you for coming. I'm Sharif Mansour from the Committee to Protect Journalists. I cover the Middle East. I'm also an Egyptian human rights advocate, and I was forced into exile from Egypt. Same like Jamal chose this area to be my place of safety for myself and my family. And as Jamal has been pursued by the Saudi government, I was pursued by the Egyptian government. But there were people in the White House at the time, in 2012, in Congress, in the Senate, who adopted my case, advocated on my behalf with Egyptian authorities, with the Interpol, with any agency whom the Egyptian government tried to reach in order to make me safe and be able to talk to you today. There are many people like me, journalists, human rights activists, who felt that this case represents all the threats that they feel and the lack of safety they have felt for years. And this is why this case cannot be let go. This is why we are not moving on. We are still demanding that President Trump today, by midnight, for the second time respond to the question about the involvement of Crown Prince in this crime uh, so that everyone focus on the real and important question here. What are we going to do about it? What is Congress going to do about it? What is the European Union is going to do about it? What is the UN Human Rights Council, the UN uh, Secretary uh, General Office is going to do about it? We all gonna demand answers starting from here, from Washington DC, going to Geneva, to Brussels, to Istanbul, wherever the truth lies. Thank you so much. So I wanna thank everyone for coming. And also I just wanna add a personal note. As a journalist who used to work for, Saud for a Saudi Arabian news organization based in the Gulf, and then having been fired and kicked out of the country for an article I wrote, and knowing every day that journalists, like my colleague Sharif Mansour, who suffered at the hands of the Egyptian government, journalists around the world are taking risks every day to tell stories, to bring us the news, to provide commentary and analysis that helps us make sense of the world. We cannot let this unprecedented murder of a journalist in a third country, in a safe space, in a consulate, go unpunished. And we can't let the United States highest office in the land decide publicly that arm sales and economic oil interests outweigh the life of a journalist and the importance of press freedom to upholding the rights of citizens around the world. So we hope that we'll see a response tomorrow from the administration. And if we don't, we are not ending this fight. Thank you. If anyone has any questions, please let us know and we'll direct it to the right person. Yes. Uh, Mike Pompeo, Secretary of State, is meeting with the Saudi Foreign Minister this afternoon. Do you expect uh, Trump's order to come up? And what do you want Mike Pompeo to say to the I think it would be shocking if the Secretary of State were, not, were to meet with the Saudi Foreign Minister and not bring up the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. 
I would hope that this would be topmost among the agenda. I would assume that they will be discussing the initial um, visit by the UN Special Rapporteur. Uh, I think that it would be great if the Secretary of State could request from Saudi Arabia's uh, foreign minister that Agnes Calamar, the Special Rapporteur, be granted access to the Saudi Arabian Embassy. We'd also like to see uh, Pompeo urge that Saudi Arabia invite an international investigation by the United Nations uh, Secretary General and send that invitation so that that can proceed before too much time passes. I think that Congress thankfully has seen how important it is to address this brutal murder and to send a signal that contradicts that sent by the White House that this absolutely cannot stand. So first of all, um, in activating the Magnitsky Act is an important first step. Looking at the role that the special relationship between the United States and Saudi Arabia plays in providing succor and, and um, allowing this type of behavior to take place without repercussion, examining arms sales and military assistance, for example, to the war in Yemen, which has resulted not only in um, tens of thousands of civilian casualties, but also in the murders of journalists um, by airstrikes. So we would like to see a hearing held on Saudi Arabia and specifically on press freedom. We'd also like to see Congress demand and as well as Pompeo in his conversation with Saudi authorities today, the release of all 16 journalists who are currently imprisoned in Saudi Arabia for their work, 12 of whom were imprisoned since Mohammed bin Salman came to power. The murder of Jamal Khashoggi was not one man's murder. It was the murder of a journalist in one of the most blatantly uh, incredible, horrendous ways that contravenes all sorts of diplomatic norms and sends an incredibly chilling signal. We hear on a regular basis from journalists who cite that murder, and I can tell you myself, I personally feel concerned as a press freedom advocate speaking out on Saudi Arabia on um, these issues about what is the retaliation that they're going to face? What is the signal that not holding those who ordered and carried out the murder of a journalist accountable for that murder? What signal does that sa send to journalists around the world who are trying to hold their governments accountable? It sends a signal that even if you flee into exile, which happens all the time. The Committee to Protect Journalists, Reporters Without Borders, PEN America, we all support journalists who have to go into exile to escape potential retribution or imprisonment or even death. So what signal does it send when you can't even go into a third country and be safe? This has hugely symbolic importance and needs to be addressed immediately. Yeah, please. Um, regarding your question, uh, Mohammed bin Salman is, only, is also only one individual. He's not the only option in Saudi Arabia, and by many accounts, he's not representative of the Saudi people or even the royal family. There are other alternatives that are there. However, he centralized all the power and he eliminated all the opposition, even within his own royal family. However, he's getting protection from this White House. If this White House releases or somehow hints that he's not doesn't have their blessings then there would be other options that would emerge in saudi arabia the people there are too afraid to actually come forward because they will face the same fate of mohammed bin salman so mohammed bin salman may be good for donald trump and his family but he may not be good he's not definitely not good for saudi arabia and definitely not good for the united states and the relationship between the u.s and saudi arabia we're not saying that America should choose who leads Saudi Arabia. But at the same time, they are choosing who leads Saudi Arabia by sticking with Mohammed bin Salman uh, at all costs. He should be held accountable, and there are other options there. Um, 
and you know they should be in discussions with other leaders in that in, in Saudi Arabia. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Yes. Have you seen a difference in communications with members of Congress because of the new chairman of the Senate Medicine? I'm going to let my colleague Michael, who's our Washington advocacy manager, answer that. The question is if you've seen a difference in uh, relationship with Congress. As to be expected with a, a new session of Congress um, and new leadership of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, they're still to some degree getting up and running and trying to understand the challenges that they face. Um, we have been as an organization communicating with the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, its leadership and its members to urge them to continue speaking out about this case. I think that even though there's been a shift in leadership, it's really important for the new chairman, Senator Jim Ridd, to continue pushing on this case because if the Trump administration can effectively ignore a Republican chair in Senator Bob Corker, who just left the chairmanship, um, can, it, can effectively ignore his request to the administration to carry out an investigation, um, what does that say about the power of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and its leadership? So we have been continuing to, to speak with the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and other members of the Senate to continue pressuring the administration on this issue. I do think that there has been a, a tremendous more, um, uh, a lot more from Congress in terms of speaking out on press freedom issues generally in the past several years. Um, and there's been a very forceful response to the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. And so we just hope that that continues and that's not something that falls off the radar you know, of Congress and specifically the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? All right. Seeing none, I want to thank everyone for coming. Um, we're happy to answer questions. My colleague, BB Santawit, is our press officer. If you need information, we all have cards if you'd like to follow up. So thank you so much.